Okay, so this right here is my 2001 Lexus IS300. And recently it's been overheating. Uh, by recently, I mean multiple times. Uh, quite often, actually. And it's been overheating because, you know, it's got a 20 some year old radiator. Yeah, I'm a 22 year old radiator. Yeah, this car is old. Okay, so. Uh, I had two different ways of fixing this issue, right? Number one is go to AutoZone or play with The car alarm fucking works. <laughs> okay, back to my point. So, I got two different options of fixing this, right? Number one is to go to Toyota AutoZone to get the OEM radiator uh, because it's an automatic car and put a radiator in. Number two, which is a little bit harder and because I am and a little dummy, I bought a aftermarket coil ride radiator, uh, which is specifically for the manual transmission cars, but this is automatic. So, this is going to be the process of me putting a coil ride MT uh, IS300 radiator into an automatic shipbox IS300. But yeah, I still love this car. It's going to be awesome. So, step one is to get the car up in the air and bring the coolant out of the Okay, so now to drain the radiator on this thing should be right a uh, little drain thing plug or whatever it's called should be Wow, everything is leaking underneath this car, god damn yeah, there it is So I'm just gonna let the radiator drain out real quick. Okay, so while the radiator is currently draining, I thought I'll introduce the two main parts of this mod. Uh, number one is this guy, Coil Ride Radiator. Uh, again, for the manual transmission car, this is not a manual transmission car, so I will be needing this guy. It is a uh, separate transmission cooler, but I may have gotten one that's a little bit too big, uh, but we'll find out. I mean, to be honest, with you, this car is gonna get the shit kicked out of it. It always does get the shit kicked out of it. I, I'm not gentle with this car at all. And uh, I'm pretty sure I may or may not have overheated the transmission on a good number of occasions just uh, going sideways and stuff. So, maybe uh, two bigger transmission coolers is a good thing. But, anyway. So, I'm gonna be totally fair with you. I'm really curious to see what this radio looks like. Because it's probably one of the more, like, serious mods I've done this car. Most of the stuff I've done is pretty much like, you know, underglow or coilover or uh, This and the brakes are probably the most serious, serious kind of things that this car so far. And granted, I only got the brakes after I stopped having front brakes. And I only got the radiator after I stopped having a working radiator. But I would still consider these important modifications. Oh, I'm doing that. It's sexy as hell. And even says play around right there. So, be really careful not to damage anything. You know, I just realized this thing doesn't have a radiator cap on it. This shit was 340 bucks. It does not have a radiator cap on it. I'm sorry. Okay, so just like any Toyota product, there's a ton of 10 millimeter meter bolts holding everything in. I'm gonna remove the intake and then take off the little radiator uh, holder thingies. So that is surprisingly loose. Comes off there. I'll keep that off to the side. Oh, here's the old thing in my underglow. I guess I should cut that out. It's all in my This one is my right here. And we'll keep it off the side. Assembly and the radiator hoses. So, time to grab a flathead screwdriver and we push it off. What's funny, these are actually mission motor radiator hose clamps, and I don't think they're any good. I regret buying them. If anyone's listening, mission motor radiator hoses way too fucking tight for their purposes. Okay, so the upper radiator hose is off. This is pretty much off. I just put it on to take the radiator hose off. Uh, but 
once we get underneath the car, that's when a little bit more work begins. So, number one, you'll see this little guy right here, which I believe is some kind of sensor. I'm going to pull that one off. Hopefully it comes off. I don't know. Oh, something on my eye. There's a the lower radiator hose. Now these guys are the ones that are going to be causing me some uh, learning experiences. These are the uh, transmission cooler lines. As you can see, they run back to the transmission, which it cools. Uh, I'm going to take these two off. This one's actually already about to come off. Maybe it's a good thing I'm replacing these. I believe these are about 3 8 inch line. Oh my god, the car is leaking quite badly there too. Damn. Where is this car not leaking? My AC compressor is leaking. I just replaced that thermostat housing a while ago. How is that leaking again? Uh, damn. At least it doesn't look like coolant, maybe. Something else. Anyway, looks like it's been leaking down here, too. The hose might not have been coolanting well enough. Ah, uh, so this radiator might have been leaking for quite a while. Anyway, sensor are off. Low radiator are off. Transmission cooler lines off. And then I can get to this guy and probably just pull it right out. So, and yeah, this is a remnant of an underglow. Okay, so there's a new Clearide radiator. Uh, as you can see, it comes with all the bolts you need to fix the radiator French shroud assembly on there. But for some reason, it doesn't come with a radiator cap. I don't get that. Uh, it does have a new drain plug. And as you can see, the bolts that are the, the little bits that go for a tiny cooler are not there. And also, here's the sensor. So I need to transfer over the fan assembly in the sensor, and then I can pop the thing in the car. I'm probably going to be taking off the front bumper so I can uh, mount the aftermarket tranny cooler somewhere in front of the AC condenser. And what's kind of funny is this is one of those mods you'll probably never see on my car, but I'll know I have it and it'll be cooler in the summer and at the racetrack. When I go drifting in my Omen Defias 300, which is soon going to get a Y38 out of an FRS, actually I think it's still sitting over here somewhere. There's a Y38 out of an FRS that I still gotta put in this car. But I also need to get it re geared down to four tens. And actually, I think after all that is done, the new fenders are on it, uh, smaller wheels and tires, it should be good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna be reusing the old uh, Lexus IS300 radiator fan shot assembly. And if you can look down here, it looks like we also need to transfer over the coolant temp sensor. But other than that, everything is pretty much coming together really quickly. And uh, as you can see right here, no automatic transmission cooler, automatic transmission cooler. So once I get this thing mounted in the car and plugged up and everything, I'll pull the front bumper off, get some more 3 8 inch line, and extend the hosing for the transmission cooler to the front. Also, this right here is the coolant temp sensor. It should be a 19 mil. Yes, it is. And we'll try to take it off. There we go. This thing looks ancient. Should I clean it out before I put it in there? Yeah, it's actually not that bad. Oh. Looks like there is some kind of steel on it that I'll need to clean off and put back in, but yeah, not too big a deal. I'll probably make a quick AutoZone run, uh, get a new O-ring and some hosing, and come right back. So I'm still in the process of installing this radiator, and I realized something while I was looking at the old radiator, right? If you look at it right here, you can see a, a mark where the fan has gouged out the radiator. Not enough to cause a leak, but definitely enough to leave a marking. So I decided to come over here and take a look at the radiator fan, the new radiator, and yes, it indeed does contact the actual radiator. Now, it's again, not enough to cause a leak, but definitely enough for me to not like it. And I'm also replacing these little hoses and things, so I don't need to worry about them cracking in the future. This fan spins freely, right? But this one 
is definitely contacting the radiator. So, I'm deciding on what to do. And I'm thinking the best thing I can do is probably just put a couple washers on these guys for now, or maybe even buy a aftermarket radiator furnace rod assembly. So I'm looking at my options. Okay, so a quick situation part. What I ended up doing was uh, just getting some washers from AutoZone right there and uh, spacing off the actual radiator fan shot assembly and now it spins freely. Doesn't contact anything. Like just barely lets off so we're good there. Um, I put some new hoses on because the old ones are all dry rotted and junky. And I'm going to zip tie them together to keep them nice and nice and pop this thing back in the car and pull the bumper off to put on the uh, transmission cooler. So progress overall is pretty good. Okay, so now the next time I do is I'm going to reuse this uh, temp sensor that was in the radiator, but I'm going to replace this little O-ring that was on it. And I'm also going to add a little uh, water pump sealant at the base of this, just to make sure it doesn't leak. There we go, just to replace that O-ring, just to make sure it doesn't leak. And then tighten that in a little bit and we should be good to go. I probably want to clean it off too. And replace it with this little O-ring kit I got from AutoZone. Okay, so a new O-ring. Uh, with the new o-ring right here with the little temp paste on it. So I'm going to pop this right in here and tighten down that 19. And this thing is ready to go back in. I also got those little pucks off the old radiator and put them in here. Okay, so the little pucks are on. Radiator fan strut is on. It's not touching the radiator. New hoses are in. I'd say this thing is ready to go in. Oh, and the coolant temp sensor is in. So, time to pop this thing in. So I got lazy and decided I didn't want to get the other radiator hose off. What I ended up doing is just zip tying it back. And it seems to be working. It amazes me how little it takes to hold in a radiator on a car. Okay, so the battery on the the camera died and I've been working for a bit so I got the radiator in everything is supported uh, pro tip if you're having trouble getting silicone hoses to get back onto your radiator put some Vaseline around it and it goes on pretty smoothly I don't know if that'll leak or not so we'll find out uh, again didn't come with a radiator cap can't use the old one because it doesn't fit uh, and I am now onto the process or step where I'm mounting the trans cooler now to actually mount the tranny cooler uh, it's a little bit different uh, than I was expecting I took off the horn that's normally located over here, and I was going to, well, I'm going to take off the same air bracket and the other stuff so I can move this whole thing forward and affix the tranny cooler using the little uh, AC condenser zip ties that are included and just pop it right there, just like that. So it's just going to sit right there. It gets zip tied to the AC condenser, super stock, and I can even put the horn right on top of it, so no one will ever really know. Nice and easy, don't you love it? I will say, I don't think anyone would ever notice this radiator isn't stock. And again, you can see right here, I didn't apply the shims on this side. I did apply the shims or washers over here. And everything spins freely, nothing hits the actual radiator. Overall, it's a win, 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 win. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna take, I took the bolts off here and here. I'm gonna grab the bolt that's sitting back here, which I'll need to run to do. There's also one bolt at the bottom. I remove this horn right here. I've already removed the horn on the other side. And then I can just pop this thing forward, attach the uh, trans cooler. Okay, so it's been about a week now of uh, work and everything, and I realized I definitely should have installed this cooler uh, after I, uh, before I installed the radiator. So now I'm pulling the radiator back out so I can mount these little like zip tie things to put the cooler onto the AC condenser. Uh, to do that, it's probably going to be. Oh, damn. My. Radiator's already getting bent up and nicked up, but that's okay. Anyway, so I gotta pull this out, mount the uh, oil cooler and uh, the transmission cooler, and then put the radiator back in. Also, I'm really starting to hate these hoses with a passion. Okay, so I want to address the tranny cooler real quick because this is something that made me really nervous in terms of how it's mounted. So as you can see here, I got little pegs going to the holes with the foam on. So this right here is a foam lock, right? What you do is you run the peg through here. That. Remove the adhesive backing right here, 
And then, uh, well, you can pop this too, it makes it a little bit easier, just like that. And then, you remove the foam block, just like that. Right? And just slide it right down. Voila. And what happens is these barbs will actually be what's going to hold the radiator in. It's going to go through my AC condenser, and on the other side, it's going to be this guy. It's going to be pushed onto it, and it's going to hold it on. Now, make sure you don't put this on early, because these are permanent, and the only way to get them off is to cut it. Okay, so let's try this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these guys out right here, and then just uh, begin to pop them into the, right, the AC condenser. Now, if the AC condenser does get a hold to it, I mean, it's probably old as hell, and I have a decent reason to fix it. And I have just found out how to fix them at work. So, so the point of these foam pads right here is to prevent the condenser from, or the cooler, from damaging, or from rattling on the condenser and messing it up. So what I'm going to do right here is line it up to the point where I feel like it's going to be good, push the barbs through. I'm calling them barbs because I can't really think of what else to call them. There's one in, just gonna keep lining them up and popping them through. Number three is in. Now this is the part I'm really hoping I don't fuck up because uh, the instructions make it very clear these things are permanent and they don't come off once you tighten them in. And, uh, I have this really bad habit of fucking shit up. Okay, then we'll cut the barbs off, try to pull the lines together, and then we'll cut the rat on. So this right here is the original tiny cooler line over here and over here. So I'm going to get those to go around over here and connect to this. Overall, it's really solidly bounded, so I call that a win. Okay, so the end of the video, uh, I actually didn't get the chance to film it too well. The SD card got corrupted and I lost quite a bit of footage. But I did finish the install of the radiator. Everything is in and it was very simple. I just slid it back in, uh, put the tranny core lines uh, for the original location onto the actual radiator or the, the separate transmission cooler. You can see I, the way I route the lines, I just went around the the AC condenser just like so you can see the transmission cooler right there everything works the way it should I bled the system I used the OEM to the coolant I got from work I burped the cooling system and everything went well see right there there's the radiator tucked in the back I don't know if you can see it all the way but there's all that and all in all the car runs great I just think the fix some stuff with the front end. I ended up buying a carbon fiber hood for the car and uh, it flew off. So it did cause some damage to my hood mounts and other things. I'm in the process of currently fixing them. But right now my number one priority is going to be to get this Volvo running and getting my Drift Mustang running. And really quick I'll show you the hood so you know what I'm going to be posting up in the next few weeks. I've been making a lot of progress on this Mustang that I've had for like four years. Uh, if you actually go back on the channel, you can see uh, some of the videos when I first took the transmission out and stuff like that. So, there's the Mustang right there. Here is what's left of my carbon fiber hood. I'm going to be making some videos on how I'm going to repair it. Because I do have fiberglass damage on the inside. This hood has a fiberglass interior and a carbon fiber exterior. There's also damage to the carbon fiber. Here's the oil pan of my Mustang, which I'm going to be putting that on today. Damn, the paint is already coming off. That's really shitty. But maybe I did waste my time painting it. Wow, I definitely did. Okay, 
And there's the Cadillac ATX Brembo's that are going on the Mustang. Uh, I pulled the fuel pump out of the CBR, so that's going to be coming up. I basically have a ton of videos saved up and like backlogged that I haven't been editing. And I'm still cleaning the garage. It's just a lot of progress, which has been really slow, but it's been happening. So I'm hoping to have this thing running by maybe the end of the month or next month. And the Volvo running by the end of the month or next month. And hopefully the CBR too. Here's to being productive. Oh, and uh, do some work on the van too, but that's gonna be a film little video all in all. But yeah, have a good one guys. Do it or else you do on the internet, and thanks for watching. Oh, also, look at the Subaru, the little bug eye over there. And there's another Subaru back over here, towards the other side of that wall. But yeah.